Welcome back to the ACC on ESPN. And we've got a good one here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Seven point ball game between number 21 Georgia Tech and the Wolfpack of NC State, but Georgia Tech driving, trying to change that. Second down from the seven. They need to reach the four for a first down. Sims stopped outside the five. NC State defense has been pretty good in the second half, haven't they? They have absolutely picked it up. One play that we haven't seen that was successful in the first quarter in the same point, point of the field right here was that little counter play. Remember? And the guard was pulling, yeah. coming around. See him get back to that. Going to the right side, a little counter. Start the back, the A back in motion towards the quarterback, and he pivots and comes back around. This will be the 11th play of this drive. Third and a little less than two. Smith. What a great defensive play. The tackle by Dante Johnson. Grabbed him and just wouldn't let him go. The difference at NC State and the tempo that they're playing, you see the speed right now. Audie Cole right up there in the middle of the field, the linebacker, and the speed from the inside out. That was missing early in this game. No sign of the field goal team. They could go up by 10 if they bring on Justin Moore, but they're going to go for it. What would you be telling the defensive line right now? Don't listen to the snap count. Watch the ball. And they did it again. Holy cow. They obviously aren't you, listening to the booth. Oh, <laughs> you said it. You've been all over it. Great job, Tevin Washington, working it. Both sides, defense, by contact, half the distance of the goal. Oh. The goal goes to the first down. Hune and McGill both went across. So why would you even trot out the field goal kicker when you can make him jump off sides whenever you want? No question. You know, it's one of those deals you're danged if you do, danged if you don't. They're playing on their toes in the second half, and they're having more success defensively. But when you get to the fourth and short like this, then you, know, you, you got to stay on your toes or you won't stop them. Washington lost the ball. It was not a clean exchange from the center. No sign yet. NC State says we have it. But no signal from the official. Now he says second down at Washington got it back. What a break. A couple of times the ball's been on the ground and it's been a break. Had that ball kicked up just a little bit, who knows where it goes. That's why you have to play every snap. You can't assume anything. Second and goal. Smith, touchdown. Orwin Smith with his third touchdown of the ball game. That has been a terrific play for them. This is why they call him the big O, the A back. And I just said it a moment ago, he's 202 pounds. He's bigger than your traditional back. Earl Wolf over there, he's a big guy too at, at 200 pounds himself. But when you've got that kind of momentum and speed coming at you, you're gonna win it going to the goal line. They love that jet sweep with Orwin Smith. More for the point after. An impressive drive for Georgia Tech when they needed to have it. They went 67 yards and 13 points and two fourth downs where they had the defense jump off sides that aided them in their attempt to score a touchdown. Tuesdays this fall, Tim Allen returns to ABC in a new comedy about a man's man living in a house full of women. Tim Allen, his last man standing. The series premiere Tuesday, October 11th, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. Well, another challenge for NC State that closed within a touchdown. Now they're down by two with 12.29 to go in the ballgame. T.J. Graham waits at the goal line. 
Driven into the end zone, he'll bring it out. The best kick returner in school history. This time he swallowed up before he reached the 20 yard line. Nice tackle by Jacob Kahoot. James Washington in this game has breathed life into an, an anemic ground game. He's at 16 carries, which is a career high. He's tied so far, so the next carry becomes his new career high. He's taking advantage of the opportunity, running the football and catching the football. That has opened up the opportunity in this fourth quarter for number six, T.J. Graham, to catch the ball. At some point, they're going to have to find number six. Glennon, blitz coming. And throws underneath, intercepted Isaiah Johnson with a pick. Isaiah Johnson, 10-5, touchdown. A 34-yard interception return. That is a dagger. Isaiah Johnson had an interception last week, his second of the season against North Carolina. It was tipped. The ball was lost in the sun. He said, I never saw it. It just hit me and I caught it. He saw this one. And this big crowd is starting to head for the exits. Well, Isaiah Johnson, they say, is a star in the making. Last week, Mike Lennon threw a ball down the middle of the field that he shouldn't, and it was intercepted. He's got to learn that that ball, he's not been able to complete it, getting it over the defender who's underneath. Now we see if he can come back and make something happen. Time to take an innovative look at the Wisconsin ground attack. Brought to you by AT&T. If you're talking Badgers, you're talking rushing. Here the middle linebacker fills the wrong gap, and the Wisconsin offensive line creates an enormous hole for running back James White. But the play is really made by second-level blocking. Nick Toon springs White with a key block. Later in the run, White gets another block from a wide receiver and goes in for the score. This innovative look is brought to you by AT&T. We think possible. Football on ABC. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, Beer, Sports, Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. And Allstate. Shop less, get more. Georgia Tech kicking off. Graham, deep. Could use a huge return here, couldn't they? T.J. Graham fighting off tacklers out to the 29-yard line. And you go back and you look at the interception. The safety has walked over and is clearly on the receiver. Here's coming your blitz on the outside. I think somebody needs to break off in the face of this and go to the flat and give him an option. He throws right into the cushion and the coverage of Isaiah Johnson. That's, that's an easy pick. 35-14, NC State. Now really going to have to pick it up. Washington takes a shot as he gets out to the 39 yard line. Looks like it's just shy of the first down. George Tech's going to let him run all they want. But you've got to maintain that if you're NC State. We just saw what happened when you start throwing the ball too much with an inexperienced quarterback. Mike Glennon has lots of potential, but until he gets all of those snaps and seeing all of these things, and that was a blitz. That's Algo changing things up. Washington again, trying to get outside, but Sweeting made a solid tackle on the corner. Algro in the first half, he was just kind of feeling his way around there, rushing four. Then he added a fifth one against the rush in the second quarter. Coming that time with five and six, so he's not stayed vanilla. He's a good football coach, and he understands what a team's doing, and he'll usually counter it with something else. Washington again. I'd like to see NC State with a little more sense of urgency right now, wouldn't you? Yeah, and I'd also, uh, I know that it's, it's not logical, but here it is, fourth and inches. I think you go for it. I don't think you have a choice. Clock running, approaching the ten and a half minute mark. 
NC State's got to keep this thing alive. And again, sure using an awful lot of time. Washington on a deep handoff. I don't know whether he made it or not. The mark is just about at the original line of scrimmage, which would be a yard shy and turn it over on downs. Yeah, this is a big momentum deal here for Georgia Tech. Confidence builder for them for the season. And this team jumped out big, kind of fell asleep a little bit. That was a strange series. NC State didn't play with a lot of spirit, a lot of snap to it. Just sort of went out there and went through the motions. Pick six took the air out of them. Yeah. Well, it's it's tough psychologically too when you fight back in a ball game, get within a touchdown, and then bang bang, you're down three again. Well, I can trust you. You know this, and I know this. Paul Johnson's not finished with his <laughs> his play calling. No, he's not. He's not comfortable with the lead like this. Washington down the middle, wide open. Jones touchdown. Yeah. You're all over this one, aren't you, Parker? Yeah, I just had a feel. Yeah. Had a feel. Uh, you were right. Nobody in the secondary had a feel because Roddy Jones was about as open as it gets. And that was a good throw by Washington. Three touchdowns in the last two minutes and 22 seconds. There is a reason why they lead the nation in scoring. And that's it. There's not a play in that playbook that can't go for a touchdown. Right, it's something, boy. Every snap, this Georgia Tech offense, man, they can just put it on you. And, and again, this is one of those deals they're building for the rest of the season. They're, they're looking to get into the ACC championship. They want to be the conference champions and play in a BCS. I'm back! Tim Allen is last man standing. Premieres Tuesday, October 11th on ABC. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Buick. See real stories of human achievement on the Buick Human Highlight Reel at NCAA.com slash Buick. And Allstate. Shop less, get more. Make one call to an Allstate agent. Several quick scores have brought the smiles back to the Georgia Tech sideline. They are up 42 to 14 here at Carter Finley Stadium in Raleigh. David Scully and will preparing kick to kick off again. Unless NC State can mount a miracle comeback, this will take them to two and three. Georgia Tech will go to five and oh and presumably move up in the polls this week. T.J. Graham got a couple of blocks on the corner and out of bounds near the 35. Robert Flores with an update. Robert Graham. Hey, Mike, AT&T All-American Player of the Week update. Robert Griffin III of Baylor. Five touchdowns today against Kansas State. 18 touchdowns for the season. 17 incompletions on the year. Right now, Baylor is leading 35 to 26 over K-State. You can text vote to 55862 and a chance to the trip to the national championship game. It's remarkable. 18 touchdowns and 17 incompletions. Jeez. Glennon out in the flat. Completes it to back up Ta uh, fullback Tyler Purvis with Taylor Gentry out with an injury. You know, this ACC conference has been <clears throat> year in and year out, a competitive conference. And, and going back to the summer and visiting with Commissioner Swafford, John Swafford, he was like, look, we, all we're needing is a, is a marquee team to emerge. Florida State has fallen down. And, and when, you, when you talk about the balance of this league, teams like NC State, as this season goes along, 
will become formidable if they hang in there. Mike Glennon's going to get better. They're going to get some players back, hopefully, on defense. And that's when someone gets knocked off that you didn't think should be knocked off. Well, certainly for the future, you know Tom O'Brien's going to win here. He, he won seven straight bowl games at Boston College. He is a proven commodity. He told him when he got here it was going to take five years. This is the fifth year. But he had so many injuries on defense, there's no way they're going to win early in the year when you're missing half your defense. Well, the way C will carry on this possession. And here's the rest of the schedule. They do have Central Michigan and, and Virginia. And those are games where they can continue the running. You know, that they've got something they can build on from this game. They had moments here, and they did play a very tough Georgia Tech football team. But then they get into the Florida States and the Carolina, and, and you know, Clemson hanging down there. That's one of those games I'm talking about. Clemson, at the end of the year, happened to play one of these teams, and it won't be easy. Tobias Palmer with that catch off the arm of Mike Glennon. And make no mistake about it, Georgia Tech is a pretty good football team. Number four, that's Tobias Palmer. They're going to give you fits. And they're not just a scheme team either. There's athletic talent out there. That's a, that's a good point you make, Mike. Uh, and it's changed so much uh, since Paul Johnson first got here. And they were successful when he got here. Creasy, little stutter step. Creasy straight up the middle, 10, five, down to the two. Twenty-six yards on the sprint up the middle by Creasy. Yeah, Creasy, a guy getting a chance because Curtis Underwood is out of this ball game and taking advantage of it. The little stutter step that allowed the blocking and the hole to open up. The patience there. These are the little things that the the team can build on. The ground game was abysmal to say, and that's being nice. Yeah, against Cincinnati, their last ball game. And when you have minus yardage, the running game is not working. First and goal, Creasy is the back. Glennon wants to throw forward and has the touchdown to his fullback, Tyler Curtis. Some people would call this window dressing. Other people would say excellent experience. It's progress, whatever you want to say about it. And, and this is one of those for NC State and their offense. Glennon getting rid of the ball on time. And uh, it's, you know, it's a nice job going down the field. The NC State running backs, 29 carries today for both Washington and Creasy. They've gained 185 yards. Pretty good production there. 6.2 yards a carry. It's 42-21, 7.47 left from Raleigh. ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Tony Stewart has won the first two. He goes for three in a row while defending champion Jimmy Johnson will look to bounce back from a surprisingly shaky start. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues at Dover. Coverage begins tomorrow afternoon, 1 Eastern. NASCAR countdown presented by Napa. And the footage you're looking at there from Rush Hour Carts here in the Raleigh area as some of our crew went out. Shoot some background stuff last night. Those things are so much fun. Yeah, does that qualify as work? You know, Tony Stewart qualifying 28. That's not good on a short track like Dover. Onside kick attempt recovered by Georgia Tech. And they'll return it down to the 25-yard line. Jamea Thomas, a defensive back, got it on the bounce and took off. And now we've got some pushing and shoving. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary for this ball game as the officials break it up. Smith, nine carries, 74 yards. How efficient is that? Three touchdowns. Tech had three scores in a span of 222 here in the fourth quarter. And Washington with a huge game, 166 total yards for the Wolfpack running back. Now the officials trying to sort this out after the play. Is yeah, see if they're going to penalize anyone. Dead ball, personal foul, 31 on the North Carolina State. We have a dead ball, personal foul, number five, 
Those fouls offset. First down. The old offsetting penalties. Yeah, my guess is that you know, frustration for sure on NC State, and I and, and wouldn't be surprised that there's frustration on Stephen Hill's part too, has not had the big games that he's been having. And that you would think he would have in this one. So Georgia Tech football, though, spotted at the 24-yard line, 743 left in this game. And the new quarterback is Sinjin Days. Love the name. Zinnin on the toss down to the 21. Robert Flores with the studio update. Robert. All right, Mike, updating you on South Carolina and Auburn. Marcus Lattimore. Shifty moves, gets his way into the end zone to put South Carolina up 13 to 9 going into the fourth. Meantime, SMU leading TCU in the battle for the iron skillet. That'll make Craig happy. <laughs> I'm a giggling and I've been watching on Gamecast here <laughs> in the booth. The old iron skillet meant something to us back in the day. I used to either worry about getting hit by an iron skillet or <laughs> picking it up in TCU's game. I love trophy games. There's always great stories behind, you know, what you're playing for. Georgia Tech has had nine ball carriers today as they get Lions a chance to carry again here. Numbers on Sinjin Days, who's out of Powder Springs, Georgia, a better runner than Tevin Washington. And, but he's completed four of his five passes he this has. season. 106 yards, so he can throw it too. There were a lot of folks who thought this was going to be their quarterback this season. A lot of people were rooting for him to start. Days on the keeper and is drilled as he gets inside the 20s. The 18, they would need to go to the 14 to get the first down. Bad decision there. He should have stayed around the lead block. He'd have, had a, he'd have made the corner if he'd have done that. So Nice day for Tevin Washington. Running the offense, he did not throw it particularly well. Missed several wide open receivers. But this was probably the only game that they would say he did not perform very well in so far. And now they'll line up for a 35 yard field goal. Justin Moore, who's three out of five this year. Delay a game. Offense. Five yards. Still fourth down. So that'll move him back five. Make it a little bit tougher effort for Moore. His long field goal this year is 40. Five thirty eight left in the ball game. And Moore drills it through. Let's take a look at today's Good Hands play. Brought to you by Allstate, Craig. Good hands off of a bad decision. Blitz coming off the corner, and Mike Lennon gives Isaiah Johnson a chance to make the play, and he absolutely does it. Good hands, good block, and finds the end zone for the, for the pick six. Alcro will be happy with that play, building on the defensive numbers for the season. If you're Georgia Tech, you have to be happy with the 45, but there were a couple spans in this game, especially against the rushing attack, I don't think they're going to be too pleased with. I don't think any coaching staff is ever totally pleased with any game that they, no, they come are, out with, are they? No, they have to have something uh, to work on during the week. I get the feeling Paul Johnson, he... Uh, he's a pretty regular at demanding something extra, a little bit different each week. Graham, who has been held in check, tries to cut back and only reaches the 24-yard line. You know, which right there, for example, Paul Johnson wanted more out of his special teams, and they've been successful today. Here's what the Yellow Jackets are looking at. 
Maryland and Virginia two very winnable games before they take on a tough Miami team. That's a tough stretch there Miami Clemson Virginia Tech three weeks in a row. I think the Virginia Tech is a Thursday night game. In Atlanta you'll enjoy that. Yeah, I, I know we've got them on a Thursday night. I think that's I think that's the game that could be a humdinger. The new quarterback Tyler Brocious getting to play a little bit in Mike Glenn instead. He's a redshirt freshman and probably the future of this program. You know, for the, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to put to bed the, the day for Mike Glennon. You know, he's he's seen more more defenses, more snaps. He had the, the benefit of a of a running game. I have total confidence that he's going to be a heck of a player. The numbers are good. You know, the pick six will keep him a, awake at night. Sure. He, you know, and he had a couple of drops. So, I mean, the, the numbers could be even better, but at the end of the day, this offense at Georgia Tech forces you to score when you've got the ball. And that long, remember that in the second quarter, they had the ball nine minutes, 50 seconds, no points. Got down inside the 10 yard line, couldn't, couldn't finish it off, then came back on the next drive and scored. Creasy tripped up as he got to the 45 yard line. If they could have scored on that drive, it would have made it much more interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, these numbers here. This is why you have to really look inside the numbers because it, it is skewed, right? When you start looking at the rush numbers after the game. But even before this point here, NC State had dramatically improved in the ground game compared to their previous one. 12 carries, 76 yards now for Creasy. Well, the old ACC, they, they've got a couple of new partners coming in. Can't tell the conferences without a scorecard, can at, you? At least as of today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? We get a lot of information uh, from the folks at, at ESPN sent to us uh, by, by mail, by computer, uh, by handouts, by any way possible. And the strangest thing we're getting now are daily updates on who's in what conference. It's crazy. It, it really is. I do like geographically the way the ACC has gone about their footprint from the inception and then until four and then five when Boston College jumped into the game and now Pitt and Syracuse. It makes sense geographically how it's situated. And I also like the fact John Swafford, the commissioner, was aggressive. He was proactive. He didn't sit around and wait on anybody. He went for it. John Swafford's a good man. Yeah, and, 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 and Pitt, Todd Graham, and that football team, we saw on Thursday night what they did to USF. They're going to be a good ball club. Draw play to Brandon Barnes. Getting his first action. Now one of the, one of the negatives of this game, Jeremiah Atalchu, who was helped off the field, went to the locker room. That, depending on the severity of that injury, that might be the only negative coming out of this thing for Georgia Tech. He's a good player. Clock running. We're approaching the three-minute mark, and the delay to Barnes again. Here's how Jeremiah got hurt earlier in the ball game. Last week he had nine tackles, three sacks against North Carolina, and was one of our impact players for this football game. And a, and a young man, sophomore, with, with the size and the makeup that was using that as a springboard game for a, really a, a yeah. strong season. And so you'd have to hope for his sake that He'll be able to get that thing healed up here in the next few days and get back on the field. Hopefully nothing more than a strain. Looked like he got the uh, ankle caught under him. Brocious throws it up for grabs. Incomplete. Good defense by Sweeting. 
You know what, Mike? I, I have liked Rod Sweeting and, and Luis Young in the secondary and Reed, uh, Isaiah Johnson. They played well back there. Been many balls thrown deep that they've been back covering up. I mean, Sweeting had a better shot at that than the receiver did. And the receiver, Jay Smith, when you run the pattern better than the receiver, pretty good deal. Second and ten, Barnes. Looking at the scores, Michigan today, 58 to nothing over Minnesota. Ooh. Denard Robinson. Was that this year we had that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? How yes. It, it, I mean, seems Denard, like a long time ago, whoo, doesn't it? It sure does. But he is. One spectacular player. The defense at Michigan playing well now. People are really going to have to deal with him. And if Robinson can stay healthy, sky's the limit. Brushes that little half hole to the left and throws incomplete. It looked like Palmer had a shot at that one, but there is a flag down. Yeah, I think Tobias Palmer was pushing off. This against the offense. offense. Yeah. He was back there with Lewis Young. Pass interference. Defense number 42, 15 yards, previous spot, automatic, first down. First thing you've missed all day. I may not have missed it. He, he might have missed it. You may not. <laughs> Tonight on ABC Saturday Night Football, Taylor Martinez and Nebraska play their first ever Big Ten game. The Huskers go to Madison to take on Russell Wilson and the number seven Badgers. A pair of top ten teams, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Part of the tailgate week fired up by Kingsford Charcoal at 8 Eastern on ABC. A couple of pretty good quarterbacks really different in their styles. If Taylor Martinez is able to throw it all, that's, that could be a really good ball game. Brocious underneath. That'll be a short game. I think I think Wisconsin is a football team that, with the addition of Russell Wilson, and now how he's adjusted to them and become a leader of that football team. I mean, they're legitimate national title contenders. They had always had guys who were more game managers than they were dominant players at yeah. that position. But yeah. Russell Wilson's a dominant player. And their ground game, they've got they've got everything uh, just lined up right. Good chemistry there. Brocious over the middle to his tight end, Mariel Carter. And Carter's inside the 15 for a first down, and we are under a minute. Yeah, I like I, I do like uh, I like Wisconsin at home in that in that ball game. And uh, another learning curve probably for Taylor Martinez, although he's very seasoned and good player. To the end zone and incomplete. I'm going to get one right today. I like Georgia Tech in this one. <laughs> you know, I, I, I think I'm going to jump on the rambling Greg from Georgia Tech bandwagon as well. All right. Let's see how it turns out. <laughs> Is this the kind of football team when you look at them today, Craig? Is this the kind of football team you, you alluded to it earlier that they want to be in the ACC championship game? The kind of team that can make it? As much uh, as their offense was impressive, I like the athleticism on, on defense. That's what makes me think that they're a, a competitor and legitimate for the ACC conference. Brocious. Good protection. The blitz didn't get there. And Brocious for a touchdown to Tyler Purvis. The first career touchdown for Tyler Brocious. That's got to feel good for that redshirt freshman. Good for him. Full back out of the backfield. Gets lost on the inside. Julian Burnett. Leader on that defense. Yeah. Al Grove not happy with the way his defense played that one, although he's up by 17 points pending the extra point. Oh 
and it's 45 28. That's one Brocious will never forget. Well, Tom O'Brien's got a great challenge for this football team. They were flat last week coming out of Cincinnati, dejected. They've been, they've been pounded pretty good by Cincinnati. And I, and I said in the open, I thought they needed to play desperate uh, with, uh, with, with the fear of, of a bad season coming. Yeah. And it, they didn't start well. It didn't go their way. And Georgia Tech thumped them. And uh, so it's a, he's going to have a little less going to be tough coaching. I thought a couple of keys in this game. The first drive when they got Georgia Tech got the fake punt when they were about to have to kick it away on their first possession. Mm -hmm. The fake punt keeps the drive alive and they score. Mm -hmm. And then that long NC State drive that got inside the 10 mm -hmm. and produced nothing. Mm -hmm. I thought those were the two biggest events in this game. Yep. But one thing's for certain Tom O'Brien's been around a long time. And, and if, if you're into buying stocks, I've always said I'd buy stock in Tom O'Brien. Long term. Oh, absolutely. He, he knows what he's he knows what he's got to do. You can't deny the fact that he has lost a lot of players on defense. And uh, so, you know, and even the guy, the fullback Taylor Gentry today, they put him over to play defensive tackle a few and times. He and hurt. he got hurt. May not get any volunteers next week. Now it's easy for us to say those things because we're not emotionally attached to NC State. If you're at NC State, and you're an alum or a fan. It's hard to accept any of the above. Oh, absolutely. Georgia Tech was up playing for the onside kick. Instead, they kick it deep to Lasky. Well, the Big O had another big day. Came in averaging 180 all-purpose, 88 on the ground. He didn't disappoint us. He's a guy that just not only can he can he run, he can block. He does a little bit of everything, but he's got some good folks up front blocking, giving him a chance. Really good pass receiver, too. Didn't anything that young man can't do. Only averaged 8.2 today. He came in averaging 18.4. So his average will suffer tremendously. They'll always give me a hard time about my math. That's about half, isn't it? Yes, it is. What's up? Ball's loose. NC State has it, and a touchdown for the Wolfpack. It's Brandon Bishop, the safety. Did they get it away from Sinjin Days? Now, Days gets on the outside. And, 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 you know, this is just one of those where you've got to know the situation. This part of the football game, defense hasn't given up. Ball's on the ground for sure. And Bishop is there to pick it up. Boy, great awareness by Bishop. And he takes it in for the touchdown. Not sure what they're reviewing. I mean, just, just making trying, sure, just confirming. Just trying to make yeah. sure that the ball came loose, and obviously it did. Bishop's going to score to make it 45-34. Could have been a significant play had they made it earlier in the ballgame, couldn't it? Yep, looking at the scoreboard, Michigan State beat Ohio State. We did Ohio State last weekend, and we saw that really talented quarterback Miller at home, but... After further review, ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And with 20 seconds left, they'll try to cut the lead to 10. <laughs> NC State late getting one member of the kicking team onto the field. Point after is good, and it's 45 35. And there have been 45 points scored in this quarter alone. Well, there are a lot of folks who are interested hanging around for that last score. That had some meaning to it. 
Well, T.J. Graham came into this game leading the country in all-purpose yards, and he was only thrown two, three times. Those were deep balls for the most part, and and it, and just what. I know Dana Bible's very smart. Called a lot more offense than I ever have. And yep. I know he'll he'll look at it and he'll figure out, okay, these are guys we have to get the ball to more often. But Thursday night at Pitt, Tino Sinceri, their quarterback, was trying to get it going as well in the new offense, Todd Graham's new offense. He found his running back, Ray Graham. Handed off, who's a beast. swing back, and he went wild, and their team went wild because of that. So sometimes you, you find your explosive players and let them pick you up. Yeah. And, uh, just didn't happen today. Well, you you recruit playmakers for a reason, and once you got them, you gotta you gotta work with them. Georgia Tech expecting an, another onside kick. They'll probably get it this time. They do. It's got to go 10 yards, and NC State has it. Very well executed as the kicker trailed the ball until it went 10 yards. I don't see how it cannot be NC State. They came out with the football. There may be a ruling that he touched. In we have illegal touching on the kicking team. They touched the ball before it went 10 yards. Therefore, it would be the receiving team's ball at that spot, first down. We well, also had on the all sides on the kicking team. Why? That penalty's declined. It didn't look like first it. down. Well, the offsides part gets them right away, and it was offsides. I don't think he touched the ball. No, he, he did, didn't. That was clean, but the not. offsides absolutely was real. Sadie. So it should have been just a five-yard penalty, make them go re-kick the deal. But the illegal touching that they gave them made it a mute point. And that's it. No more surprises, no more big plays. It's going to end at 45-35. And Georgia Tech remains unbeaten. Two coaches who have a lot of respect for each other meeting in midfield. Partner enjoyed it. We'll see you next week, wherever. It, it was fun once again. Our final score, Georgia Tech 45, NC State 35. For Craig James and our entire crew, this is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching, everybody. So long from Raleigh, North Carolina. 45-35, the final. Now we go back to the studio.